Welcome to our week five edition of Friday Football Fever. This one, the kickoff to district play for our Laredo teams. In tonight's show, we've got the Toros trying to stay red hot. Plus, the Knights opening up their season. We'll get to honor our latest player and man of the week. But first, we start with a game that many of the Gateway cities circle on their calendars the day the schedules come out. See, so United go to battle the Longhorns and Panthers. Opening up district play in our game of the night. Both teams struggling against good competition in the early season, but all that could be forgotten with a win tonight. Pick this one up. The first drive for South on offense. Knock on the door of the end zone. Who else? Brandon Benavides. A tough yard and a half, but he gets a yard and a half. The Panthers take a 7-0 lead thanks to that short touchdown run. On the ensuing drive for United, they're going to the ground quite a bit. Frank Soto getting popped, but picking up big yards here to keep the drive going. Then a couple snaps later, Soto on the handoff again. He's going to get walloped at the goal line, but he's in for six. Just like that after the PAT, we're all knotted up at seven. Well, could a South answer? Facing fourth down, they try to go to their star running back. This time, Anogo. Alejandro Salazar standing it up for the turnover on downs. United's got the ball. We are going the other direction. They've got decent field position due to the Longhorns, trying to make it pay off. Looking to the air. Racist Neroso with the deflection on the drive. It's going to end up stalling out. United misses a field goal as that deflection comes up big. Well, could the Panthers get the momentum? A little play action and fake this camera guy out. Luis Cisneros connected with Armando Garza. Great stop and go. Check it out. Looks like he's into the end zone, but a block in the back at about the two-yard line. Going to pull this one out. And that would be big. As United's defense, they stand up again. Isaac Mendoza going to come up with a tackle for a loss, forcing a field goal that comes up short. We would go into the halftime break tied at seven. After the break, that's his three scores by all by United South. It's the guys in black pick up a huge 27-7 win to kick off district play for their foes over at United. Next up, we had to Shirley Field. The Toros riding a three-game win streak into their district opener with CC win. Lead in the third quarter at 7 0 Mavericks. Sigurdsson facing third and long. They're going to call the number of who else? Jakob Lozano. He needs eight, gets about nine. But he's going to keep those chains moving as Sigurdsson trying to get into the end zone. This start of the fourth quarter, that same drive, another third down for Sigurdsson. Who else? Number four, calling his number. Nothing on the right side, bouncing it back, reversing his field, stretching out, getting hit. Somehow he finds his way into the end zone. The PAT is good. We are all knotted up at seven. Those good feelings not going to last long. A big return has win in the red zone. Sigurdsson's defense, though, they stand up tall. Ricky Villa, the open field tackle, taking down the Maverick ball carry there. That's going to force a field goal try. The kick for CC win. It's going to be up and no good. Pulled way left. A huge stop for Sigurdsson as they've got some life. Well, the offense would stall out. That sets up win for a methodical drive. Pounding the ball on the turf, trying to play keep away from the Toros and just move those chains down the field. Win, though, would be forced into a second and very long. It looks for, like prime position for Sigurdsson. Instead, a rare pass going deep and connecting. 32 yards later on the pitch and catch, making a 14-7 Mavericks lead. Well, the last chance for Sigurdsson facing fourth and very long after a penalty. The Mavericks pinning their ears back getting a rush and that's pretty much how this one ends with the sack the Toros turn the ball over on downs they fight to the bitter end but come up on the wrong end of a 14-7 final so their three-game winning streak gets halted we are just getting started here on Friday football fever when we get back time to head out of town our cameras are up in San Antonio from both Martin and St. Augustine those highlights coming up when we return we're back and headed up north. We're both Martin and St. Augustine in play in San Antonio tonight. That's right, the Knights, their second ever football season, finally getting the chance to take the field. St. August struggled to find nine district opponents, so they jump right into district play against a very good St. Gerard squad. As Coach Martinez likes to say, this version of the game is like basketball on a football field. The six-man game means you got to score early, you got to score off, and to pick up wins. The Knights find the end zone there. They would get the PAT, but sadly, it's not going to happen for them on this evening. Even though with that score, it's just not enough as the Royals going to come back, punch him real quick. That snap fumbled and right in the hands of the running back. He's off to the races. 
This one ends at the halftime. Due to the mercy rule, better days are ahead for the guys at St. Augustine, but not on this night. They fall 72 to 20. Next up for St. Aug, their home opener Friday night against Castle Hills from Montez Field over at Nixon High School. A little further south, the Martin Tigers opening up district play against San Antonio Southside. The Tigers coming into this one still looking for their first win of the season, but again, not going to happen on this evening. The Cardinals come out and put the running game on display, scoring quickly to get on the board, leading this one 7-0. After a quick Martin drive and a forced punt, the Tigers not going to be able to make the stop on this return as the Cardinals get a running catch on the punt. He's going to take this one back to the house. Again, Martin just can't get anything going Again, without any big playmakers on offense or defense. It's a slog for the guys in red and white. They fall again, this time 45-0 to Southside. The Tigers now 0-5 as they get ready to welcome Southwest Legacy to the Gateway City next Friday evening. Checking on our out-of-town scoreboard, another rough one for LBJ. They head over to Eagle Pass. The Eagles figure to be in the mix for another district championship this year as they pick up a 56-7 win over the Wolves. LBJ just never really in this one. Over at Carrizo Springs, how about the Wildcats? They are, remain perfect on the season. They're now 5-0. Zapata handed their second loss in a row after a 3-0 start. This one actually was fairly close early on before Carrizo Springs pulls away. Zapata would get a late touchdown, but there's not enough to get back into this one. Over in Rivera, Bruni, the Badgers, taking it to the Seahawks. Always love it whenever a Seahawk team falls. It's the Badgers picking up a 56-6 win over the Seahawks there at Seahawks Stadium. Rivera, a nice team. Bruni taking them down. Big win there for the Badgers. And over in Taft, this one's still going on at last check. They're in the fourth quarter. A good one between the Longhorns and Greyhounds. Right now, those Greyhounds look like they might be running away with a one-point win over Hebronville. We'll try to get you a final score of that one coming up in the break. We're not done with Friday Football Fever just yet. When we get back, time to hand out some hardware with our player and band of the week. Plus, who's moving on in our King of the Mountain voting? It's all coming up when we get back. It's that time of the show where we get to step back and honor the best of the best from the previous week. Tonight, that takes us over to Alexander, where the Bulldogs picked up their first win of the season last week in a big way, winning 57-0 over Rio Grande City. A big part of that was because of sophomore quarterback Javi Jimenez. He had 235 yards through the air with two scores, two more deep passes that made it down to the one-yard line and could have been touchdowns. He also had another 46 yards and a touchdown with his feet. His coaches are expecting big things out of this sophomore quarterback, even if he doesn't have a ton of experience. Well, Jimenez is right there there in his outlook for the squad high standards for everyone um, keep pushing and hopefully we get district championship obviously it's his first year as a quarterback for us and he's done some good, really good things um, you know we're expecting for for him to to have a lot of a lot of success this year um, as well as our whole team you know I think you know <clears throat> in order to get recognized I think we're, the, the team has to do well and I, I think our our team did a great job Congratulations to Jimenez and the rest of the Bulldogs on earning this honor. Be sure to tune in every Friday night to see who's crowned our latest Player of the Week. It's not just about the football players. We want to honor the band as well. And tonight we bring you the Mighty Mustangs of Nixon High School. The Green and Gold have 129 members in this year's squad as they perform Untethered Angel. Nixon led by senior field commander Joseph Sosa and assistant drum major Carlos Carrion. This week's band members of the week are Joey Guerra, Gustavo Luna, Luis Lopez, Sergio Lopez, Brandon Olmos, and John Sosa. Just this past week, the Mustangs placed seven members in the area jazz contest. Congrats and good luck to Nixon as competitive season approaches. Speaking of the Mustangs, they opened up football week last night, faced off with Alexander. This one goes to the Bulldogs. Alexander would score on their opening possession of the game, thanks to a bad snap on a Mustang punt, and then powering in with Gael Rodriguez for a one-yard score. The first time would be dominated by the defenses from there as Alexander took a 10-0 lead into the break. Nixon got on the scoreboard early in the second half, and that's all they get before Alexander slams the door shut, winning this one 24-7 to open up district play. 
And how about our King of the Mountain a play of the week? A little good news for Nixon as this one's going to go to them. Aldana dethroning Pena here with a nice interception, playing that one off the trip drill, taking this one back. Part of a 13 0 win for Nixon last week. The Nixon Mustangs came out to vote for their guy in a big way as they take down the two time defending champions over there in the Zapata. He's moving on now. We'll see who he faces off with later on this week. One final score to report. Hebronville comes back. A late touchdown to win that one at 35-28. United South picks up the win 27-7 over United. A big district game there. And Cigarroa unfortunately sees their three-game winning streak come to an end. They fall 14-7 late in the fourth quarter this evening. Well, that's going to do it for us here on a Friday Football Fever. We hope you have a great weekend. We'll see you back here next Friday night for more scores and highlights. Have a great day, everybody.